What I was thinking is, oh, holy crap. One of the most hyped LEGO sets of 2023 is finally here. This is set 7621, Spider-Man Final Battle. But does it live up to the hype? Let's find out. I grew up watching Spider-Man and to this day, he's my favorite superhero, bar none. If it wasn't already obvious. So when I woke up one morning in May and saw this set had been unveiled, I was so excited. <gasps> I was so eager for this set, I was tempted to fly to my nearest Lego store just to get it on release day. But thankfully I didn't need to do that because my local toy store, they got it early. But enough talking about the set. Let's take a look at it. So this beautiful set comes with 9 minifigures and 900 pieces. First up we have Ned and MJ. They aren't quite film accurate as far as how they're dressed, but I'm willing to forgive them. Though one thing I won't forgive them for is not including a screaming or crying for help face to put on MJ. Because I don't think this is how I'd be looking if I was falling to my death. Like, what? <laughs> we have Doctor Strange, and we've seen him before in the Sanctum Santorum, and also in that new fancy little poly bag. And then for our villains, we have Dr. Octavius. He's got a grey coat on, which doesn't sit right with me. At first I thought it was just me being too used to the fit he wore in Spider-Man 2. But he actually was wearing green in No Way Home, so not sure what the designers were thinking. And they've improved the technique for his octopus arms as well from the 2004 model. And then we've got Electro, who personally I think is the best of the bunch in this set. I love his face and the torso printing and the lightning bolts coming out the back of him. Oh, they're just the icing on the cake. And then we have Mr. Norman Osborn, aka Green Gobby. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> you know, some people would say he's something of a Lego figure himself. Nah, that was terrible. I think Lego missed the opportunity to put a, a hood, a waistcoat, or some form of cape on him just to make things a bit more dramatic. I know he doesn't have his hood up in the film, but it's, it's there. You can see it. And I think it would just level up the character a little bit more. His pumpkin bombs are a nice touch. They're not printed, but I'll shut up. <laughs> his glide is pretty basic, but what can you do? I do like the purple plates and the blue flames. Nice touch. You might be wondering, where's Lizard? Where's Sandman? Well, Lizard completely got cut. He ain't nowhere to be seen. But they did include a little nod to Sandman, which we'll take a look at shortly. Last but not least, we have the main attraction, the three Spideys. Starting with Tom Holland's Spider-Man, we have the integrated suit. This minifigure appears in the only other No Way Home set that we've got in the last two years since the movie came out. I love the large gold spider symbol, and he's got dual molded legs with printing. He's probably the most detailed one out of the three. Next up, we have Mr. Andrew Garfield's Spidey, the amazing Spider-Man, which is making its first set debut ever. Everyone knows that back in 2013 or 14, there was a Comic-Con exclusive Amazing Spider-Man minifigure produced, which you can still pick up online if you have a spare $8,000, $10,000 lying around. Jesus. I think this figure nails the Amazing Spider-Man suit perfectly on the torso. The spider symbol is accurate on the front and the back. They didn't quite push the budget for some web printing on the legs, but I'll let it slide because I'm just happy to see an Amazing Spider-Man figure for less than $10,000. Saving the best for last, we have Mr. Tobey Maguire's Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. Now, I got a set back in 2004 with a very similar minifigure. Putting them side by side, you can see they're pretty darn close. The new one has some more details like the muscles, and the waistband is on the torso instead of on the actual waist part of the legs. Interesting. The eyes are darker and smaller compared to the original one, but I'm pretty satisfied overall. They even nailed the silver web printing, which just gives it that extra shine. Oh. I mean, I might be biased, seeing as, you know, he's my favourite. But the one thing I won't be biased about is their alternate faces. They're all questionable, to say the least. I think they absolutely nailed Andrew's hairpiece. This is exactly what his hair looks like in the films. I think I saw this in Seinfeld or Queer Eye. Can't remember. Tobey Maguire looks like Han Solo, which I can't unsee. And Tom, eh, I guess is alright. I do like his hairpiece. Reminds me of my own hair a bit. God, what am I doing? But I think it's safe to say I'll definitely be displaying these guys with their masks on. Alright, we spent this long talking about just the minifigures. So let's talk about the, the main part of the set, Lady Liberty. Honestly, I was pleasantly surprised by this build. From the initial photos, I wasn't sure if I was going to actually want to show it off and display it. But I actually had a lot of fun building it. There was a lot of fun builds throughout. 
particularly the scaffolding around the outside, I think looks pretty sleek. And Lady Liberty do be looking fine with those hot dog eyes. Damn. <laughs> I did think the technique for her mouth was pretty clever. And they used curved windscreen pieces for the side and top of her head. Pretty cool. And within her head is a couple of hidden details or easter eggs as well. If we take the top panel off, you'll see Mr. Simon. Which is movie accurate seeing as it's where he almost drowns Toby. This can also be displayed outside the set if you fancy giving him a bit more of a spotlight. If we pull down the back of the Liberty head we'll see a portal that Doctor Strange or Ned opened up which leads to the Sanctum. The whole thing is built upon a sturdy base with these round plates giving it a smooth clean finish. It is pretty weighty so it doesn't slide around as much as you'd expect and it isn't a huge set either so it'll fit quite nicely into a bookshelf or on a desk and become a great display piece. Removing all the figures it obviously looks a lot more bland and boring so I would recommend keeping them on here just to add that pop of colour even if it is mainly red. Overall, I'd say I'm a pretty big fan of this. There are some quirks like character details they missed or just got completely wrong. And like I said earlier, the lack of Lizard did take me by surprise, but I guess he didn't have a huge part of the film. But besides those, I was pleasantly surprised with how much I liked the set. I'm crossing my fingers that we get more Spider-Man movie sets in the future. But anyway, that about wraps this up. If you want to get this set for yourself, check the link in my bio. You can buy it directly from LEGO and support the channel while you're at it. This is my first full-on LEGO review, so let me know what you think in the comments below. But for now, we'll catch you in the next video, which will be very soon. See you then.